Now, as we know, the Republican right, extreme right wing and their allies, the xenophobes, the cultural nationalists, the fear mongers, have successfully taken over the framing of this debate. They've set the framework on how we talk about immigration reform. And interestingly, they've done this by injecting class analysis and a critique of corporations into the debate. And so they've put themselves in the position of being the champions of the American worker. And it's that same crowd that constantly sends the AFL-CIO emails and telephone calls and nasty letters you know, expressing outrage at the fact that we are allowing illegals into labor unions. Now, anyone who would strip millions of workers um, of the right to join a union for whatever reason is not a champion of workers at all. But, it's, but they've been able to capture that sort of that segment of the popular media. When we look at what's going on in our political debate, today, since candidates can't talk about Iraq with any credibility to the American people, since they cannot talk about the economy or many of the issues that the American people care about, they are trying to change the conversation. And uh, what they are doing is as old as this republic, blame somebody else for the problems that are facing us. And then we see at the local and at the state level initiatives that are targeted at immigrants, such as in Arizona where there was a, a state law passed that says that any employer who is caught twice hiring undocumented workers will have their uh, uh, business license revoked. We see in New York where the governor here was trying to do the right thing and then caught a lot of flack and backed down. We see it in other states like Oregon and Washington State where the same thing is going on. We see it in local initiatives like at Prince Williams County right outside of Washington, D.C. where they passed an initiative, uh, an ordinance that said that uh, undocumented immigrants cannot receive or cannot have access to any other public services. Um, my organization just released a report that we conducted with the uh, Urban Institute, that actually the Urban Institute conducted with our support, uh, on the impact of immigration raids, uh, workplace enforcement raids, on children. And one of the things the Urban Institute found, they went to three communities where, uh, where workplace raids had been conducted, parents separated from their children. They, when they round them up, they shackle them, they put them in buses. The parents don't get so much as an opportunity to make a phone call to make arrangements for the care of their children. For every two immigrants apprehended in such a raid, one child gets left behind. Um, in the state of Oklahoma, a law was recently passed. It was put into effect uh, on November 1st of, of, of this year, um, which makes it, among other things, illegal to transport anybody who's in the country illegally. So if you happen to see somebody who's had a car accident or whatever it is, uh, you have to think twice before you transport them to the hospital because should that person be an undocumented immigrant, you've broken the law. Um, again, this is a civil rights crisis. This is, it's getting crazy. That's where we are right now. That's how this debate, um, that's where it is. The debate is currently in the public lexicon. It's a toxic climate. It's been poisoned by the extreme right wing. And so what we see, again, as Eliseo and Jonathan um, have talked about, is that all the candidates are either running away from the issues, the Democrats are, as you saw the fiasco with Hillary and the driver's licenses, or on the Republicans trying to out-xenophobe each other. Or as one of them said, they're out trying to out tank Credo each other. Legislative reform is probably not around the corner. It's certainly not going to happen tomorrow. And we have to really think about what does that mean for the labor movement. It means that we have time now to do um, which, what something, in my opinion, we, we needed to do a long time ago, and that's to craft a unified, progressive approach to this problem. Now, to us, the policy um, an immigration reform policy has basically five interrelated components. One is that we have to have a swift, 
practical, and inclusive path to legalization. Two, we have to have a mechanism that allows needed future workers into our economy um, with full rights, not as temporary workers. We're really talking about long-term labor shortages here as the baby boomer generation starts to retire. Those are permanent jobs. It makes no sense to us, to working people, to fill those jobs with temporary workers. We have to have enforcement of labor laws go hand in hand with enforcement of immigration laws. Right now, the Bush administration is just a, is taking an enforcement only, enforcement of what? Enforcement of immigration laws only approach. And that's devastating for workers. Um, four, we have to have liber civil liberties must be protected in any immigration reform. And we have to make sure that all workers have social protections. Now, each of these pieces together is the comprehensive solution. So here's five things that I think labor should do. One, I think that we have to unequivocally stand up and say that the raids that are going on are wrong. Two, I think that we have to oppose local and state ordinances and as well as uh, federal initiatives that go and, and scapegoat immigrants. Number three, I think we have to help immigrants to build their own power. Now they have a lot of the initiative, they want to do this work and the labor movement, one of the things we have is resources and assets. And we ought to help them to organize and build their own power. One of the things that we know is that the way we make change in this country is through the ballot box. And if you look at our society, we're becoming ever more diverse, except on election day. And the final thing that we need to do is we need to do our own homework within our own membership. Because a lot of our members are also listening to Lou Dobbs. A lot of our members may be listening to Rush Limbaugh. And we are not doing enough to educate them about what the real issues are and why it's in their best interest that immigrant workers are given the right to uh, legalize their status in this country. I have to say I largely agree with the direction that Anna suggests as well as, as with Eliseo. Um, we, we have uh, important lessons to learn. We have important ways in which we need to continue to shape the policy that we are trying to get done. Um, and that policy has to be a reform of the larger immigration system. It has to deal with the flaws in the current system. And it has to create a, a legal pathway for workers who are otherwise going to enter illegally at the risk of their lives to work for, to sectors of the economy, which very much rely on their labor. Um, and that all, But that also includes reforms of the way we conduct immigration enforcement reforms of the way the legal immigration system works. Um, and, and at the end of the day, we have to do a better job of, of um, understanding it and framing it in terms of workers' rights, but we have to do a better job of making sure that the policy strengthens labor protection regimes as much as possible, not just for the sake of immigrant workers, but for the sake of the workforce that they join. I think change is inevitable in the U.S. I think we're going to win immigration reform. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. The question for me is where will labor be?